What? How are you? Um, yeah. Good morning, everybody. You. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's an hour. Let's go live. Start. All right. I think we're all. We're on some old platforms now. Um, okay. We call him here. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Father, we thank you for yet another beautiful day. A wonderful time always in your presence. We give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, even as we are assembled in your presence and as we journey into lights by the Holy Spirit, we know that all things are made sense for us to assess, to relate with, to enjoy, and to bask in. So we give you all the praise, even as we ascend together as one with you, and we are entwined in you, manifesting your gloriousness, expressing your praise, expressing your love, and releasing frequencies of light into the atmosphere. You are glorified, you are honored. Blessed are you, O God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right, so... Um, Today, we shall be looking at, today we'll be looking at um, the living expressions of God. So we are living expressions. Hallelujah. So let's look at Colossians chapter 1 first. Then we'll proceed from there. And I'm going to do it from... Let somebody help me read from any other translation from verse 15 to 16, in fact, to 17, in fact, to 18. Fifteen to 18. Colossians 1.16 yeah. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Verse 17. You, 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 that's, that's 16, you said, I said from verse 15. Okay, from 15. Yes, so the Son is the image of the visible God, the first born. Over all creation. 16. Yeah. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and visible, 
what are fruits and powers and healers and authorities? All things have been created through him and for him. Verse 17. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 18. 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have his supremacy. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me read from the mirror translation. It says, In him, the image and likeness of God is made visible in human form, in order that everyone may recognize their true origin, which means what God did with Christ. It said, In him, the image and likeness of God is made visible in human form. Let's go. If you go back to Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26, it said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion. So he said, in the image of God, he created them. In the image and likeness of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, but here, look at what he's saying now. Because by reason of the fall, it's as if we forgot that particular ordination. We forgot it. We walked away from it. We shifted from it. And we began to live like, um, we began to live like, um, strangers to our true profession, to our true image, to our true um, we, we, uh, the, the, the knowledge of our being, the understanding of our being was distorted by reason of the wrong information that we have been fed with. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, so it, it says here, it says, in him, which means when Jesus came in human form, when he came in human, uh, incarnated as human, he, he, he came to bring us back. He came to reawaken in us by himself that particular ordination that we have with him in the beginning. So in him, the image and likeness of God is made visible in human form in order that everyone, you and I, may recognize our true origin in him. In him. He is the firstborn of every creature. Now, so the, the um the what darkness veiled from us, he unveiled. In him, we clearly see the mirror reflection of our original life. The son of his love gives accurate evidence of his image in human form. The incarnation means that God can never again be invisible. Hallelujah. That, that, did, that God was incarnated in man means that God can never again be, vis, be invisible, which means everywhere you turn and you see a child of God, you see a son of God, you are seeing God. Because if he's the visible, in, um, the visible expression of the invisible God from that time on, you and I, you seated there right now, you that is connected from anywhere in the world, you are the visible expression of the invisible God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So everything that is, everything that is, begins in him. I want you to personalize it as I read on. Personalize it in your mind. I don't want to do injustice to you. I would have been personalizing it here. But I want you, as I read, you personalize it. Said everything that he is, and I will before so that you won't think that you are because sometimes we are so. One of the things that the fallen state and religion did to us is that we become so. Uh, how do I put it now? So. Um, is it fearful? Not even fear. If it is, if it, uh, timid that we refuse to accept. Hey, we think that is humility. I know. How can I say that? You know, but I pray that today boldness will come in Jesus' name. Because what Jesus did was to bring you, was to awaken in you who you are, your true identity, the, the, the identity of your origin. That's what he came to awaken in you. Now, he said, everything that is begins in him. Now, because you are one in him, you are in him, he is in you, and you are the living expression, the visible expression of his invisibleness, which means everything that is begins in you because he is in you. Amen. Are, are, are you getting it? 
Now, whether in the heavenly realm or upon the earth, visible or invisible, he is the original blueprint of every order of justice and every level of authority. Be it kingdoms or government, principalities and jurisdic or jurisdictions, the original form of all things were founded by him and created for him. Oh my goodness. When you begin to read this, it's like something begins to turn loose in you because you are now beginning to understand and you are beginning to realize this is who I am. This is my true nature. This is my original identity. Amen. So um, I believe strongly that what God is doing at this time is that he is awakening in us he is bringing us into a clear expression of um, his unbundling all of the weights that were placed on us and unveiling the things that with which we were veiled, which we were covered. He's taking all of them out, removing all the dregs so that we'll, be, we'll come into the living expression of his true, of our true identity as described and ordained when he formed us from the beginning. Amen. Now, see, any order, any order, that is any O-R-D-E-R -E that does not mirror Christ is a distortion from man's own making. And that man's own making is a result, which means you are still operating from with the falling mindsets. You know, the mindset of the falling states. So if you are doing something, any other, anything you are doing that is not mirroring the Lord, that is not mirroring Christ, that is not mirroring Yahweh, means that you are seeing or you are relating to that thing from a distorted angle, which is the mindset of the fallen man. He is the initiator of all things. Therefore, everything finds its relevance and its true pattern only in him. Listen, you know, we've been saying it that things don't define you. You define things. Do you understand? See, um, we were in a meeting yesterday and we we're talking about prayer points and all of that. And I'm going to share something this morning or yeah, this morning. When you pray, how do you, from where do you draw your prayer points? How do you generate prayer points? What is the texture of your prayer? I'll give you an example. There are so many prayers that we pray. Those prayers are prayed, are expressions of our unbelief because, our unbelief because of our veiled minds. I'll give you an example. When we say, Lord, um, cause my light to shine. Help me to shine. I want to ask you, I want to meditate. Don't just give me answers. I want to meditate on the wordings of that prayer. Lord, cause me to shine. Let me ask you, is that prayer a godly prayer? If you, are, if you say yes, give me your reason. If you say no, give me your reason. Oh yeah, this is discussion part one. It's not for those seated here, but everyone on any platform. The question is, that prayer that Lord um, help me to shine, to shine bright as your light, very spiritual prayer, right? Oh yeah. Is it a godly prayer? Is that prayer from a spiritual perspective? So with the with the consciousness that uh, I have now. Okay, hold on. I think yeah. it, is, it is a no because knowing that he is in me, I am light. Mm. And already the light that is put on the table, <laughs> you won't ask the light to shine. It's mm. already shining. Wow. wow. So it should shine. So that is just who I am. I am light because mm. that's who he is. Amen. So with this consciousness that I have now, I, I will not do that kind of prayer. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, Madam Gossi, you want to say something? Yeah. 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 You know, you just rope yourself in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just rope yourself in. Because starting with that Isaiah, you just put yourself into a big problem. <laughs> because what did he say? He said, arise, shine. What is it? It's a command. It's a command. See, you arise. Because he said, arise, shine, because your light has come. Do you understand? Now, the other one, he said, he that wins souls, we do what? Shine. We shine. Which means as you are winning souls, you are shining. Did you say you ask him to make you shine? Okay, well, look at the other ones. Then me, make me shine, then me. Make me fulfill the condition to shine. No, you, you, feel, feel, you, fulfill, about winning you fulfill the condition, you will shine. As a matter of fact, eh? okay, let me show you the one that Jesus said. Look at, he says, you are the light you are the light of the world. What did he now say? A city that is built upon the hill cannot be healed. He now said something else. What did he say again? Let your... Now, look at that word. Let, let, which means you are the only person that, that can keep your light from shining. That is why... Hey. <laughs> No. What it showed is that the the initial power was not powerful enough. <laughs> now, he said, let your light so shine that men will see. That was why he started with the parable of, say, no one lights a light and puts it under a bushel. Which means God is telling you that the light I have lit in you, it is not meant for hiding. It is meant to shine, which means he has already lit you up. Do you understand? So where are you hiding it? Oh, we are, let, we say a city set upon a hill cannot be hid. So he now said, let your light so shine that men will see. You are supposed to be giving everybody light in the room. So the moment you start praying, what it means that you don't believe the command that he gave you? He has already made you a light. Because for your glory is come. I mean, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. What you need to do is to believe that word and begin to walk in that glory. You get it now? So you see, now, that's just one out of the many. You see, the thing is this, the challenge with praying the word is that we, we are, instead of becoming the word, we are trying to, how do I put it now? We are trying to, in praying the word, we pray amiss. That is why he says that we don't know what to pray. But the Holy Spirit does what? He helps, what is infirmity? Eh? Weakness. Weakness, what are weaknesses? Now look at another thing. You know you are carrying a weight. You know it. And you know that sin that anytime the sin comes, you can't resist it. Now Hebrews chapter 12 now tells you, did you say you should pray? Pray that this weight be taken off me. What did you say you should do? He said, you lay it aside. Say lay aside that every weight and that sin that does so easily beset you. In another place, 
You are carrying burdens. What is it you should do? Say, you cast your burden upon Jesus. But we are not praying, Lord, come and help me carry this burden. Come and help me. No, it didn't say you carry the burden. He said, come, cast your body. Let's exchange. Say, my body is light and my yoke is easy. See, there are a lot of prayer contests that we pray. And you are wondering, why is this prayer not being answered? The reason is because most prayers that we have prayed, you are supposed to be walking in them, not praying about them. Like the light thing we're talking about. Let your light shine. So you want, how do you let your light shine? Wind souls, one of them. Wind souls, your light will be shining. Because he said how Jesus of Nazareth was anointed of the Holy Spirit and how he went about doing good, healing. So why would he was shining? Yes. Now, what is the good he did? That's the question I keep asking. We asked this question on Sunday, Abby. Was it Sunday? Light of the city. What good did Jesus do? <laughs> eh? Okay. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. What good are we doing now? God bless you, man. Doing good meant that where there was evil, he, he brought light. Where there was darkness, he brought... So those were... Those, but what good works are we doing now? CSR. CSR. Mm -hmm. CSR. Uh, CSR. Corporate social responsibility. But you see, even that one, when you see, look at, let me show you what good works. The early disciples. Do you know that nobody was going, no, nobody lacked anything. Nobody. Nobody lacked anything. Man, let me, in this time when there is so much hardship, I want to ask a very pertinent question. Do you think the church as it is can actually feed nations? Which is, but are we doing it? Is this not the time when there would have been a lot of harvest? This is, this is the fulfillment of Isaiah 60. But are we shining? He said, cross, he said, when he said, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He said, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but because of the shining, you, as you walk in the shine, in the brightness of your rising, he said, men shall be drawn to that brightness. Is this not the time for us to rise? Are we manifesting it? No. But we are still praying, God, come and help me shine. But God, now God, okay, let's even assume God answered the prayer. He now brought darkness to cover the whole earth. But are we shining? No. God bless you. I, I know you have to run. <laughs> Amen. So you see, we need to come to that point in our life. God bless you. Mm -hmm. We need to come to that point in our lives when we begin to change the textures of our prayer, even our meditations, our waiting on the Lord. Why do you go waiting on the Lord? What is the purpose of, of your setting apart those three days to wait on the Lord? What is the purpose of your going to the mountain? I don't say, don't go to the mountain. I don't say, don't go to which, where did they go? Inside the stream, wherever you want to go. But if you want to enter the tree, oh my goodness, I'll be even, I would, if you call me, if you tell me that I came back from a retreat inside a tree, ah, my goodness, I was a boss. I won't join you the next time when they go. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you see, after going to that tree and you come out, what did you bring out? If you were able to speak to the tree, to open, and the tree obeyed you to open, do you know that if I were you, I won't need to, I will only go there, do some interactions and come out. I really would not need to, the message would not be in the fact that I went into a tree. Is that to make me feel like I'm a super being? But I would be glad for you that you were able to do that. But I won't just stop there, bro, sis, what did you bring out? 
What are the transactions? Because when you come out of that place, all the other three should start responding to you. Amen. So, today, I don't know, today might be the, the conclusion of this particular series. And I believe that as we engage all the series, you are going to be discovering yourself in them. And I want to say this before I continue. I want to say this. Don't just say, ah, this series is finished. Let's wait for the next series. I don't know when, we, when we'll have series like this again. But I want, and as a matter of fact, if you notice our teachings from January last year, it's been talking about the awakening of identities. Right? That's, that, that's been the focus. I'm praying in all honesty that you won't just make this another set of teachings, but that you will make up time. Even if you don't listen to any other teaching for now, right? That is, yeah, you come to class, I don't know what to call it again. Yeah, you come to class, you come to fellowship, but make sure that you go back to all of these series, listen to them again. Follow my son's pattern, uh, Barrow's pattern. You are listening, you pause, you meditate, you make, you take notes, then go back again, listen, which means you may listen to a segment. I think there's somebody else who began to practice that also. And she said she has not been able to pass, I think a particular teaching that we, I think um, the quantum she was engaging is she has not been able to pass the 20th minute. How many weeks now, two weeks? She has not been able to cross over the 20th minute. Why? Because of the systemic engagement. So I want to encourage you, for those who will say that I don't know how to engage, I'm telling you now, these are rules of engagement. Don't just listen to the message, brah, you cannot catch everything. It's not possible because it's in a words that have been spoken from the throne. It's not possible. Even though they are deposited, see, as you meditate on them, you awaken the deposits in your spirit man. You call them up that you did not know were there. You, you call them up. You begin to interact with them. Then you go back again. You see that more are unveiled and all of that because these are these are teachings that unveil your the, the hidden identity that had been locked in through the ages. And the enemy will keep, do everything to ensure you don't break into the fullness of it. But I pray that that hold, that resistance is broken from off you in the name of Jesus. So look, look, look at this. So now we begin to understand that he said, he said he is the initiator of all things. Therefore, everything finds its relevance and its true pattern only in him. When he says in him, he is including you and I in that in him. So in me, all things find their relevance. This is a confession. So I want you to say with me, I am the initiator of all things. So where I stand, I initiate things. I determine how things begin. And because I'm the determinant, the determiner of how things began, I also determine how we come to an end. So by this, I say with my God, I know the end from the beginning. So I cannot be moved by what things are saying, the happiness around me, because I know the end of the matter. For I am at the beginning as I am at the end. I am the conclusion of all things. So everything finds its relevance in me. So everything finds its relevance in me. I give definition to things. I give definition to places. I give definition to, places. I give definition to, I give definition to happenings. The happenings, the situations, the circumstances, they don't determine who I am. I am the one who call them what they are. So what I call a thing becomes what I call it. So everything finds their pattern in me. I am the pattern that describes, that defines, 
that shapes and establishes all things around me. Do you understand that? Did you just listen to yourself? Did you just hear what you said? Now, when you get to this point in the recording, play it over and over again. If you can cut it out and you play it over and over and over and over and over again until it forms a being in you. Because what it does to you is that it will awaken something. It will awaken the lion that has been lying still. And you find that you just start to roar in. Listen, what we just said now, if I'm to repeat it five times here, you will be amazed or will be quickened up in you. If you play it over and over again and you are listening attentively, no distractions, something will snap. Don't be surprised somebody rushes into the room thinking that something has gone wrong because you will find that you are releasing a shout from deep within. Why? Because I'm unveiling. You'll just be tearing off sheets or veils that have been covering and blinding your understanding. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, the ecclesia is a visible expression. I didn't even see this when I gave you the title. See, God, when she came to ask me the title, I said, I don't know. But as soon as I say the living expressions, say the ecclesia, that's why I just love mirror. Yeah? The ecclesia is a visible expression bodily of which Jesus is the head. He is the principal rank of authority who leads the triumphant procession of our new birth out of the region of the dead. His pre, his preeminent rank is beyond threats. Leading the resurrection parade. <clears throat> that's the message. That's how the message puts it. So leading the, the resurrection parade. You know? Now look at that. He says, I'm, oh, I just love this. I wish I saw, I wish I had read this. I would, this is what I would have used for the day. <laughs> For our confession. But let's look. He said, the ecclesia, that is me, and the visible expression bodily of which Jesus is my head. He is the principal rank of authority who leads the triumphant procession of our new birth out of the region of the dead. Remember what he said, I will build my ecclesia and the gates or the power of death cannot overpower it or run, overrun it or conquer it or weaken it. Said his preeminent rank is beyond threats. Nothing can threaten you when you understand your identity in Christ Jesus. Nothing called esteem, whether high, low, medium, They call it class. Whether you have food to eat, you don't have food to eat, nothing threatens your ranking of the spirit because you are above all. Now you don't have money in your, in your, in your pocket, you don't have food on the table, you don't have fuel in your tank, does not Describe, define the authority and the identity of your origin. And that is why what the enemy did was to veil this knowledge all through the years, beyond the years, beyond the times and the ages, in order that he might keep men under his control. And he began to teach them something that is less than theirs and brought a lot of alternatives. And they look good. That is why it is said that it is the knowledge from the tree of 
uh, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Combine the two so you have evil good or good evil. So it mixes them together, but there is something that defines it. The origin of that particular thing is what gives it. Oh my goodness, are you getting what I'm saying? The origin of a thing is what determines the fruit it produces. So you see, it is good, morally pure, and everything, but what is the root? The root is what determines the fragrance, the life, the, or the, the kind of light. So it might even give a kind of light, but I can assure you that that light is not a light rooted in glory. So what is the fruit you are producing? What is the source of the light that you are shining? The source of the light you are shining would, would determine the kind of fruits that you are producing out there. Hallelujah. So when we pray the prayers that we pray, they sound spiritual. They sound powerful. And you see, because of the kind of, you know, there are some prayer points there, right? That as soon as you give those prayer points, the texture eh, makes it to sound boo -boo -boo -boo. so, and you think that that shaking is what determines that. Oh my! That you 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 think that that shaking is what determines that this prayer point is powerful. Then the noise that they make that is why. Even when people are shouting at the top of their voice, you are still saying, I am not hearing you because they are praying to you. Eh? Okay. I'm not hearing you. Open your mouth and pray. The one who shouts the loud, loudest hallelujah is the one that gets the greatest blessing. Meanwhile, there is somebody out there that is quiet in that little corner collecting all the blessing that. You people refuse to collect because you are making noise in the midst, in the midst of the noise making, you are losing the blessings. I pray that somebody's eyes will be opened, that you will come into the place of divine identity where you will begin to understand the, 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 the fullness and the culmination of all that God has set in place for you even before time began. Look at it, says the ecclesia is the visible expression bodily of which Christ is the head. He is the principal rank of authority who leads the triumphant procession of our new birth out of the origin of the dead. Are you still operating in the place of the dead? Is your business where the dead are? Is do you see your family in the place where the dead? is still dwelling. Let's call it what it is, cemetery. It is not just enough to change the name of the, of the streets. Oh, you need to change the mindset of the people. Look at when God brought out the children of Israel from Egypt, he already has defeated the army of Israel. Before he defeated them, when he led them, he said he did not take them by the way of the Philistines. Why? He wanted to change their mindset. These guys have been, they have been given a new description. They've given them, they've changed their identity to that of slaves. Meanwhile, there are, there, there, there's, there's a warrior that was lying dormant in them. So, what did he do to awaken the giant in them, to awaken the warrior, to bring them back to the reality of their identity? He had to take them. These guys were, or they were given a mindset that made them to think less than themselves. So they have become cucumber people and onions. They have become people that they give things. Ha! Are you seeing what I'm saying? 
you know, where a system believes and they are creating a mindset that everybody in the world has a price. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I will give you the price that we, they will even place a price tag on you. And if they think that you are too wise, then they will increase the bar. I remember the story of the most dangerous prison in Mexico. Was it Mexico or Argentina? No, Mexico, Argentina. When they now brought in a new warden, a head warden. And uh, so the next thing, they drop, this place was the, the, the prison that housed um, drug lords. And they were more successful carrying out their transactions in prison than they were when they were free. They had all the information about, so anybody that came, they had all the information about the person. So when they had collected all the information about the man, they now came to, to his office with a briefcase. And they told him, you will be receiving this amount, the amount in this briefcase every month. All we are asking you to do just look the other way. So the man asked, how much is there? They told him $25,000. He said, no. He said, oh, okay. We'll make it 30. He said, not enough. He said, oh, you are one of those difficult ones. Okay, no problem. Name your price. Say you can't pay. <laughs> So when they saw that, they said, you don't prove difficult with us. They now, said, they, they now named the, they now told him the address of his house, the mother, the children, where the school, everything. He laughed. He said, even with that, I have not said, I have not said no to your offer. All I'm saying is that the amount is not up to so the man now said, there is no boy that does not have a price. Just name your price. So he said, can you pay the blood? He said, what blood? He said, if you can pay the blood with the blood that Jesus paid. He said, oh, sorry, we don't mess with anybody with the, that knows the big man up there. And the, that was the end of transaction. As soon as he mentioned the name of Jesus, he said, they don't mess with anybody that knows the big man up there. Let's read this again. He said, his preeminent rank is beyond threats. Mm. That man knew his identity. All he said, he said, can you pay? Can you pay what Jesus already paid? And because he wasn't just speaking from his head, he was speaking from a throne. When you tell people you are a believer, where are you speaking from? Where are you seated? What do men hear? When you introduce yourself as a pastor, who, do, who did they hear that you introduce yourself to be? When you say that you are the general overseer, what did they hear? So when you introduce yourself, I'm a son. What came to the mind of the people? So as soon as he carried the briefcase and that was the end, that was how all of them, all the drug lords, all of them got saved, one after the other. And that prison was shut down. That was where the, the Argentina revival in 1991 that was where it started from. Why? Because somebody dead, not dead, somebody knew his identity. Do you know your identity? Do you know who you are? Now, 
Let's proceed to that. Um, so let's now see the description of our identity in Colossians chapter 3. And I'll read from verse 1. But before I read, can I read from any other translation? I want us to read TPT and the um, message translation. Then I'll read with the mirror. If you are there, tell us which what translation you are reading. Then you read it like you are slicing bread. Yes. All right. It says, Christ's resurrection is your resurrection. Hold it. Christ's resurrection is your, is mine. Resurrection also. Which means when he was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. Remember where we stopped in Colossians chapter 1, on that verse 18. What did he say? He said, his preeminent, he led us away from the place of the dead. There was a procession that, oh God, he championed a procession out of the dead states that we had been out of the immobile states that we were in, out of the low self-esteem states that we were in, out of the downtrodden states that we were in, he led us out of that procession into the place where we have preeminence that is beyond threat. He gave us a ranking in himself that is beyond threat. Just like when God, when he led them, he did not take them to the place where they will see what they have not seen before and they will turn back because they were not, they were, they were not even prepared, not to mention ill-prepared. Hmm. They were not even prepared. Why? Because they have never handled weapons before. All they knew how to do was to harvest cucumber and harvest onions. And not even for themselves. <laughs> for the house of the king. For Pharaoh and his men. They knew how to skin animals. But all of that was taken from them. So the Lord led them through the way of the Red Sea. He wanted to show them. He wanted everything God was doing was to awaken in them their God nature, their God identity. So he began to tell them, you see this Egyptian that you see now? You will not see them again. Listen to this. Don't just look at the Egyptians that were destroyed. What he was saying, the mindsets, the folly mindsets that they can defeat you, that your troubles can overpower you, that you can be oppressed by the things that have, that kept you where you are, or where you were. That mindset, he said, you will no longer have this mindset after I have finished in you, I have finished in reintroducing you. I have reconfigured your thoughts. When I finish dealing with you, you will no longer see them. That was why when he took them through that mercy, it was a baptism. He buried them. So that mindset is the Egyptians. Because every time you go into baptism, that, this is what I teach people. Every time before I baptize, I will tell them, I say, listen, this baptism you are going into, hope you know that you are burying somebody. So you are not supposed to go in a dry devil and come out a worse devil. Mm -hmm. Just like when you plant a seed, it does not come out as a seed. It comes out as a plant. It comes out as with an ability to produce many good seeds. Are you following what I'm saying? So when they were being led through, what he was doing, he was creating in them a mindset that I'm killing you today. This is your death. So when they came out on the other side, and I said, now, Tom, you see that body you deposited? <laughs> Are you seeing? That body you deposited inside the sea, inside the ocean. That mindset you had. So I'm going to do something now that will cover this mindset forever so that you will not, it will not play out in your life again. So today I'm standing. We have been going through a procession. We have been going through a baptism of our God identity. So I stand here this morning to, de to declare and declare over that life 
You see that identity crisis that you've been having? You see that low self-esteem or high self-esteem, the one that made you proud or the one that made you timid? Or the middle, today you are here, tomorrow, that, that one that makes you switch. That one, that's, that thing that made you such that you, they even gave you a new name and you accepted it. You are an opinion receiver without verifying any. Do you understand what I mean by that? You listen to this one, you listen to this one, you listen to this one. You can't verify any. At the end of the day, you are confused. So this one say, go right. You are going right. Like, no, 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 it's not right. You should go. Go left. Then after a while, you are doing you are like this and you are nowhere. So you've been stagnant because you've not been able to identify who you are. I stand right here and now to decree that that mindset that was given you, that made you less than your, think less than yourself, that made you see yourself less than who you are, that mindset that was, that was given you, that made you to start seeking validation from the wrong set of people, today they are shut down in the name of Jesus. I stand, I'm speaking from the place of the throne and I'm speaking, this is a court session this morning and I decree and declare that that hold is broken from off your life. So that mindset, you will search for it, you will no longer see it in the name of Jesus. I speak to those on all platforms and I speak to those who are beyond the, all the platforms, those who will listen hearing after that from today, there's a glory that comes upon you. The glory has been there, but the glory is now being awakened. That which was dead in, that which was dormant, that which had been waiting. Oh, something happened. Um, was it? That was last week, Wednesday. Something happened. That Wednesday or Thursday. Something happened. What was it? I went, I got into Swiss Sensation. I love the Azobu. So I bought Zobu, bought 10 bottles. So the counter attendant, she was packing, she packed it inside the lilac. It got broke, the lilac got broken. So she now decided to use two. She put two into one, went to put another one. That one too got broken. The second one got broken. Then she now got the third one. So wanted to put three lilacs. So she was struggling. And I was watching. All she needed to do was say, please help me. That was all she needed to do. Now, I wanted to help, but I had wait. All of a sudden, I began to see teaching. The Lord began to teach me. And I began to see how the sons, the Lord is standing by. What do we call him? Our ever present. He shall supply your need according to his. Call upon me and I will. In the day of trouble, he will, when you call him, he will answer quickly. So I was there. The lady kept on struggling. I'm sure the lady would have been struggling. And of course, because it was a teaching, I would have been in a hurry to go. So after a while, and I asked, can I help you? He said, yes. So I took the line and opened it. Room, peace. And I asked him. So she wanted to go and say, stop. What lesson do you learn? So she was looking at me. I said, so with all that happened, you didn't pick anything. She now said, and I should have asked her. I said, no, you didn't get it. I said, God was, God was here just now. And God is still there. God came to teach you. And I said to her, there's something you've been struggling with in your life, trying to do it by yourself. And help has been standing by. All you needed was, Lord, help me. And it will open your eye to see the help he has already provided. She started crying. As I was carrying my kaya and I was going, I was hearing behind me. Now, wow, 
God just go teach me. I want to deliver us with this one. The manager was watching also. Say, hey, I saw God did take teach person. Very easy. Which kind of man be this self? I was just hearing that. I was enjoying the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so because of that, I slowed down my speed, my pace. So yeah, yes, now nah. your praise is comely. Amen. Do you know what I began to learn of recent? When I praise people, I'm praising God. I praise the God in them. When I appreciate people, I'm appreciating the God in them. And you know, I discovered that my praise does not get into the heads of people. When I'm praising people or I'm appreciating, it doesn't get into their head because I know who I'm appreciating. Even though I say, ah, only Fred, you are looking good today. I'm actually saying, God, you are looking good. Come. May God give us wisdom. And what is that thing you've been struggling to do by yourself? I can handle it on my own. I can handle it. But you are you are sinking deeper and deeper. I can do it on my own. I can you are sinking. Meanwhile, the help is just there. You are looking at the rope. You are looking, I can do it. So you are trying to the rope is here. You are trying to climb the wall. And you will climb up, you will fall back. Just take it, grab the rope. Two reasons, timidity and pride. And sometimes we are in, be in between. Some of us that say we are being coded, we are coding things. Let me deal with codedness today. Coding things. I don't want people to know what I'm going through. So even when you speak, you speak in parables. You are talking to your father in parable. You don't know. The way you relate with men is why you are relating with God. You will code, 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 code so that you start coding God out. You say, hey, I will, I will, I problem. Mm, there's something I'm just, I'm, there's something I'm waiting for. There's something I'm waiting for. You've been waiting for the past seven years. You've been waiting for the past three years. Is it not time you open it up? Meanwhile, because of your codedness, when somebody is trying to get close, I see the person is breaking through, you will quickly seal it up. I know when I sit with some people, I know when just when you're about breaking into the real thing, they will cover it up. Do you know what that is? It's a scab. It's a spiritual scab. You are afraid that people don't touch some people don't get to know certain things. Are you afraid that they will laugh at you? Or they will steal it? If they can steal it, it's not yours. I pray that we will come to that place in our lives. Those things that we gave name. I want to ask you a question. When Jesus spoke with the people... He spoke with them in codes. But when he talked with his friends, was there code? He said, to them, it is not given to know. But to you, the sons of the kingdom, you are coding amongst brethren. And yet you are saying that they don't love you. You are saying there is no love in this place. You are the chief architect of no love. I want to say so that we paint those coded people to their bones. They know themselves everywhere. You are the chief architect of the pains that we are going through. There is no, see, God is standing by. You say you are coding. Then you are, you are in that place all by yourself. You are in pain. Then you will say, you will not start accusing poor brethren that they don't come visiting you. But you don't even want them to know your house. If you try, 
<laughs> See coded people. I've met one before. Hey God. You know when I work with sweet kids. <laughs> you guys don't know what code being coded is. I remember one boy, 13 year old boy. That boy showed me shaking. <laughs> to take me to their house. This is their house. We were driving around the whole, just around that neighborhood, driving round and round. He will say, Is this place? He will say, Is this place? He will say, Look. <laughs> After driving around 2 a.m., we are still searching from 6 p.m. I found don't reach Benin. In fact, Port Harcourt. After a while, I, I came down from the I stopped, parked the car, came down from the car, rushed into the bush, carry one big. I said, if you don't show me your ah. house now, we'll break your head. He now said, that's the house. That's it. I still felt like see hitting him that stick. So, so we have driven past that place nothing less than 25 times. When we now drove in, and I realized why. As soon as the father saw him, the father drew out yes. machete. If this boy tells you good afternoon, better check your time. Eh? If he tells you something is green, ah, just go and look at it again. That thing cannot be green. The boy will take something, we twist it, and we convince you that is the way he said it. And I said, what? Eh? So I now pulled him behind. So when the guy saw that I wasn't running from Machete, and I said, give me way, make a kill. He now began to tell me the boy's story. He said, this boy, he's a devil. He's this. And I said, I stop calling him names. So the glory of God today, he did stay there because when I saw the way it is, <laughs> the mother died because of that boy, the trouble. So that was why the man was in pain. So he didn't stay there. But so the glory of God, he has built a house for the father. I'm not talking, I'm talking about he built a twin duplex. One for the father's business, then the other one where he lives in Festac. That code was broken by the time he was age 19. It took six years to filter out that thing. This boy, by the time he got to age seven, something happened one day and he was talking. He had actually convinced everybody. So he was talking. I just noticed that the real thing was not being said. He was going through so much. And I said, come. I said, there is something you are not saying. He said, no, don't worry, pastor. It's, it's taken care of. Everything is okay. This guy was suffering and smiling. It was after I took him through a process, and this guy is brilliant. Apparently, he was going through some things in school, but he didn't want me to know for fear that he might be withdrawn. So I went to see the principal. And after talking with the principal, the principal that told me all that was going on, said that the guy, that nobody can know anything about him, that it was, he said they had to install a CCTV camera to know that he was the one. Say everybody will even vouch for him because this guy has the most beautiful innocent face. That's the height of that's um, codedness grade one. Is the highest grade. 
that I'm giving doing the grade according to our grade in those days. Uh, when you when you say you got aggregate six, this one is aggregate nine. But you see, that boy today, if you sit not is not a man, if you sit with him and you are telling a lie, he will tell you, oh, they tell a lie. It was with him I got to know when this there, there was a time he used to follow me about the place it's because he's no longer in the country, that's why. He used to follow me about the place and when he was when he was preparing to go, I said, you need to go through a special military, um, ministry training. So because where you are going, even though you are going for business, but you are going to do a lot of ministry work because you have a very sharp prophetic calling. So I love having him near me when I'm counseling. You know what? If you are the coded type, as you are talking, he will just come and whisper in my ear, there's something she's hiding from me. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell him, I know, he say, no, sir, you don't understand. You see that thing she said, that is not, she's trying to just go dance around it. The main thing is this, he will bring it, he will bring it out. By the time I mention it to the person, you see, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what that, what what coded people don't like going for counseling because you will you might open some things up, and they are the yeah when they go they are the most difficult people to counsel because when you start getting close to where something where they will open up something they will quickly they will say I think okay don't worry I think I've gotten what I wanted now I'm good they will solve the problem by themselves stop solving problems yourself God He, he is your ever present help. I knew his sister for the six years I knew her. It was, I had to do, who is that now? Investigative journalism to be able to know where she was living. She came to see me one day. So let me go and drop you. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. I'm going to see a friend. That's okay. okay. So I allowed her to go. So, and I did as if I was going out. I said, okay, let me drop you at your friend's place. Say, no, 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 don't worry, Pastor. Let me not disturb you. Okay. So I gave her time. And I discovered that as she's walking, she's looking back. She's walking, she's looking back. No problem. So me too. I played those games in those days now. So what I did was my friend came. So I said, please let me borrow your car. So I now entered my friend's car. So she did recognize that one. So I was driving small, small. I saw her entering the bus. I followed the bus until she got to her house. As she was coming down, I waited. As soon as she entered the house, and I now entered. I, I said, please, I came to see someone. I came to the security man. I came to see so so and so. Okay, she just entered now. I said, thank you. I entered. I said, Pastor Glenn, what are you doing here? I said, I came to know your house. Don't worry, now that I know your house, you will see me again. <laughs> and I, so the parents now say, ah, come inside. I said, no, I just came to, I, I wanted to be sure that she got home safely. They say, ah, thank you, thank you. Mm, I left. What is it? In, well, by the time I go to the house, what is it? I'm not the kind of person that will come and view the kind of area you live or what you have in your house or anything. But that is what code deadness does. They won't visit people and they don't want anywhere to visit them. At least so that the equation will be balanced. So you don't accuse them of not visiting. Amen. So I pray that, see, all of those things is part of identity crisis. It is the, it is the medium end. It is the, it is the middle ground of both low and high esteem. It is false humility. See, there are things, right? If you don't want to talk about it, don't talk about it. But if you want to talk about it, don't talk in quotes. 
There are things I don't want to talk about. You can't force it out of my mouth. But when I want to talk about it, I open it up. That is why I need to know when it is right to talk about it. So when I'm talking about it, I'm not hiding anything. What's the use talking about it if I'm not going to? Half truth is not truth. Which day? Okay, it was the U.S. conventors that we're talking about. Unfortunately, we didn't record the greater part of our discussion. It was so painful. I didn't know. I thought it was recording. I didn't it was on pause. So I want to apologize for those of you who will receive it. But we're talking about, you know, truth. Talking about telling the truth in truth and speaking the truth in love. They are two different things. There's a truth I will tell you. There's a way, I mean, there's a way I will tell you the truth. You just like, you will cry. You will feel bad. You will be hurt. The hurt is not a healing hurt. There are certain hurts that will lead to healing. It's called brokenness, right? But there's a truth I will tell you. It's the truth, but it will pain you to your bone marrow. You will see me as somebody that hates you. But that same truth, there's a way I will pass it on. You will weep, oh. but guess what? You'll be thanking me. How do you communicate truth to people? But even that one, that I don't know which one is worse, half truth. When you tell people half truth, if you don't want to tell them, don't tell them at all. But once you are telling them, tell them everything so that they will be able to make decisions that are proper. Half truths have led to great destructions because they didn't have the complete information. Amen. I pray that healing will come. I know people, I expect questions from this part, right? I expect questions. And I'm open to it. And we'll use scriptures. So when you are asking questions, make sure that you have scriptures to guide your prayer. Because I mean, I'm, in this case, I'm permitted to answer your question with questions. All right. So we've only touched. The first line. But yes, continue. Say, if you are serious about living this resurrection life, you say, act like kids. In other words, manifest it. Live the resurrection life. Look at the resurrection life. Jesus. Who did Jesus hide from? The parents hid him from Herod, who sought his life. God was covering him. But after that, God kept him. The only time that he was kept from the public view was the time that the, he was being taken through the process of maturing into a son. I remember a nine-year-old that used to come and preach in our convention in First Square Gospel Church headquarters in those days. Nine-year-old. This young man, when he mounts, this young boy, that young boy, when he mounts the pulpit, when the anointing comes on him, even the way he talks, his voice changes. Then when they, they will not go and take him to the minister's room, lounge, where they are going to entertain him. The father is always with him. He will be under the table playing with uh, his, the adults are drinking uh, Pepsi and all of that. He is under the table playing with the canter, the crank cock. He's under the table playing with that. You see him pressing the thing. But after the break, he comes back. You'll be wondering, is this not the person I stopped playing with canter under the table? So what God did was to veil Jesus while he was being taken, the taken through the process of mature, how? Said, First Peter, First Peter chapter 2, verse 21, tells us how, from verse 21 to 24. He said, 21 to 22, he said, this is our vocation, or this is our calling, that we walk in his steps, even as he walks. How did he walk? He said, when he was reviled, when he was insulted, he did not retaliate. See, so when he suffered, he did not complain. Now, in that place, he said he learned obedience by the things he suffered. 
His obedience is what brought him into the maturity of sonship. I want to ask you a question. The things that the Lord arranged to mature you into, some, into a son, what have you done with those arrangements? The insults that were hurled at you, what did you do with them? When somebody gave you three, did you give them five? The things you have suffered, what have you done with them? The, are you learning obedience by those? Because it is the learning of the obedience that matures you into sonship. So when he suffered, he did not complain. And boy, I know people that have suffered. So I know what suffering is because I, I went through it. I know sisters that have suffered. There are some people that I will see going through certain things. I will be weeping on their behalf. It's like, God, but I know that they need it. So you see, Peter began to describe, he said, when you suffer for doing right, there's a glory that is attached to it. But there is no glory when you are suffering for the wrong that you did. So in the case of Jesus, no right, nothing wrong was found in him. Yet, is the accusation they accused him. Insults they hold on him. Now, what he was saying, he, he was already a son as at the time they wrote that particular thing. He was talking about the things he suffered from childhood. You know, because I write drama, right? When I was meditating on that scripture and God gave me the grace to be able to enter into writings, and I began to, so, to see Jesus was the firstborn amongst many brethren. That was also significant. Even physically, he was the first. So, that biologically, he was the first. So, I was just wondering, they'll finish eating. Let's use the typical African culture. They finish eating. He's the big boy. And a boy, for that matter, he has sisters, he had brothers. Then, when they finish eating, they will not leave the place. <laughs> and Jesus, trying to give lay example, we gather the plates and go and wash. Now, when they started growing up, they now saw it as uh, Jesus is the one that washes plates. Then, upon that, Anytime, maybe he was busy helping doing capital's work and doing, you know, when you say carpenter, it's not just carpentry, it's not just woodwork. That's where people make miss it. The word carpenter, when you go and check the root word, he was also a potter. Hmm? He was also a potter. He molded clay. He was also a blacksmith. So creative, creativity. Now, when he was busy doing that, they will not finish eating and they will leave it. Then they will go and report to their mother. You see, mommy. <laughs> see, the place are just littered everywhere because Jesus refused to wash the plates. Is that not insult? Then he will come, no complaints. As if he was house help. He will gather the plates and he will wash them. No complaint whatsoever. What was he doing? He was laying a life. He, did, he was ensuring that the enemy does not have any occasion against him. That's why I said he was tried. Those were trials. He was tried in all ways. Yes, he was without sin. Every trial that you ever went through in your life, Jesus went through the same thing. Those things that the enemy used to mold you into that aggressive person. Jesus submitted himself to another person and that person used them as the framework, as the, as the furnace to produce the gold that every one of us were enjoying today. 
When he was in the threshing floor and they were stepping on him, those were the things, all of the things that he was suffering, that was the threshing floor that caused the sweet wine that you and I were drinking today to flow out. So it, don't just look at the glory. What about the things that you he permits for you to go through because that is the only pathway for the sweetness, your sweetness to be poured out for men to drink? You are complaining. 30 years, he had to endure that. 30 years. After the 30th year, the father who sees now said, go to the Jordan and present yourself at the city gates. The Jordan was the gate of the city. Remember? It was the Jordan that they crossed to enter into Canaan land that became Israel. So he said, go and present yourself at the city gates. There's an elder there. The elders are gathered. Who were the elders? All the Pharisees, everybody, they were all there. All the religious leaders. And they understood tradition. But he had been taken through all the process. Now I have news for you. That Colossians 1.18 that we read, where he said that he processed us out of the place of death, where did he take us to? He brought us to the city gates where our initiation into sonship will take place. I pray that none of you miss it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm decreeing that none of you will miss, none of you will miss it. You will enter into the full operation of your sonship. Nothing can take you away. Nothing can cut it short. Nothing can prolong this journey. Nothing can prolong this training. You will break into it. Listen, I said, I know this too well, that it, this is what God has been waiting for to launch you into the full operation, into the full expression of everything you've been crying out to him for. That is why I started with the, with the prayer points that we pray. When you come into this understanding, your prayer language will change. Those things that we pray, Father, come and fight for me. Hey, come and carry my battle. He doesn't carry your battle. So. He has fought the fight. He has finished his own fight. You have to appropriate. Mm. You that is fighting dragon, continue fighting dragon. Me, I will fight a different warfare. The warfare of establishing my defeat over the dragon. Amen. So, yeah, continue, man. This is why we join all the two for For that is what I see. And so that it is for all our You see that? See, this is why we are to yearn for all that is above. Because we have been co-resurrected with him and in him. So I now want to ask you a question. Where do your prayer points originate from? Where does your identity originate from? The things you have believed about yourself, the things you have believed about your family, the things you have believed about your finances, the things you have believed about the works of your hands, the things you have believed about your journey, your journeys, the things you have believed about what again? About, about your beliefs. All those things you have believed, where did they come from? Did they come from what the prophet told you? about your father's compound in the village. Oh, when I see people calling, saying that their, their mothers are witches and their fathers are wizards. Why is those things are possible? And I know they could be true. Yes, I'm intentionally choosing my words. 
I know they could be true. But you see, where are you picking your belief from? Who is your father? Who is your mother? If they knew what you know, would they still be witches and wizards? Do you see? Why, why am I speaking like this? Because I'm speaking and operating from a different place. <clears throat> when somebody tells you, ah, you are a believer. You say you cry to the God, the judge of the whole earth. The one who holds, who, in whose hands lies your destiny. In fact, he is, you originated from him, mean that you are one with him, which means you are God. By divine ordination. And by divine entwinement and by divine dance. By the sounds of the spirit, he has made you everything he is. You are a true reflection of his image. Then you dare open your mouth to say concerning your child that somebody wants to initiate your child. That is what. Somebody now told you that ah, the reason things have been the way it is. You remember that day that you went to that auntie's house to eat? You see that okra soup? You were enjoying it. You didn't know that they were, you were exchanging your destiny. Really? Then because of that, that your auntie became your worst enemy. I want to ask you a question. Will God, God that you know, with the little, little, the little, yeah, you know, the little that you know of God, do you think God will introduce anybody that he created as your enemy? A person. When God wants to show you your enemy, who would he show you? Do you know, there are, as a deliverance minister, there were a lot of things I prayed, eh? But God delivered me from one thing, sir. That the one I would have prayed to kill all my family members. Instead, I shut the gates of hell and death against them and opened the gate of salvation to them. That was where God delivered me. Do you see? That was where God delivered me. I had a friend, and a light on knows, knows him. He was praying because. He kept on going from one to real to the other, one to real to the other, and they kept on showing him one uncle today, one grandma tomorrow, one this person tomorrow. So he started praying, and they would pray, and they would die. After they died, did condition change? No. I said, so when I saw, for a long time I didn't see him, when I now ran into him, I think, I um, can't remember the year now. So when I ran into him, he now shared with me, say, ah, that you remember that woman that I used to tell you about, that the woman died. Say, eh, your grandma died, and you are rejoicing. You became a channel for Satan to have their souls into hell. Oh, don't you know that that's what is happening? You are a doorway. You determine what, what passes through you and to where they enter. So you're either a doorway for hell or you're a doorway for the kingdom. I choose to be a doorway for the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I choose to be there. But you, you have, not you, not everybody, not anybody here. They have chosen to become doorways for Satan to have their souls. You now see when Jesus said that you are, that he was telling them, he said that they are like their father, the devil. So, this young man, he kept on 
And I said, so what, when he told me that, I said, so what, what, what change took place? It's worse than the time he began. The funniest thing, but see, the, the, the major thing is this. You can see what the issue he is with him in him. You can see it. See, when, when we used to hold fellowship in Elder's house, so after fellowship, Elder won't let me go until we've eaten. So he used to follow me. Finish. So on his birthday, I think Elder was 85 as at the time, 84 as at the time. And he said, so how old are you now? This man turned to the elder and said, sorry, sir, I can't tell you my age. You are eating on his table. You are not even a woman, even if you are a woman. And elder, what will he do with your age? Mm -hmm. When we came out, and I said, it was a root shock. So my fork dropped from my hand. Yeah. So I look at him. So as we were going, and I said, ah, what, what was that? He said, I know. I can't tell anybody my age. He said, when I have my breakthrough, I cannot tell you my age. And I told him, I said, bro, this is not a curse. And I don't have to be a prophet to tell you. That breakthrough may not come. Sit an elder, you feed on his table. Do you know the amazing thing? As at that time, Two of the elders were already planning on how they can. They told me, say, find out what he would like to do so that they would set him up. After that, after that particular incident, I knew I had to do a tactical withdrawal. What? Now, that is what we call high self esteem. Hmm? So listen, why am I why am I bringing that up today? Your prayer language is determined by where you are seated. The prayer points you draw is are determined by the things you see and hear. That's why Paul was saying, I am not moved by the things I in fact, not let's not even talk Paul. Let's talk Jesus. He said his judgments are not by the sight, by seeing or by hearing, but he judges in equity, righteousness and equity. Righteousness and equity, they are nature, which means he, he does not judge by citing that this Jesus, everybody is saying this person is an adulterer. Jesus sees a potential great evangelist, one that will anoint him, that will understand the mystery of anointing and preparation for his death. One who will be a world evangelist without preaching. In fact, not world, not world evangelist, generational evangelist. Because he said, wheresoever this gospel is preached and she will be remembered. One who introduced the powerful ordination and the mystery of anointing the dead in order to keep to make them immortal. Oh, you, you, don't worry, we won't teach that. When we do, when we run the school of immortality, we'll, you, you'll understand this particular mystery that I just mentioned now. I want to ask you a question. And I will just take two answers. If you were to hear tomorrow that Pastor Clem, don't worry, I won't fall. God, <laughs> that Pastor Clem fell into adultery. How many of you will still come here when I stand to preach? 
Let me see your hand. Up. Oh. Wow, you love me that much. <laughs> Amen. How many of you, by the time you start seeing, because definitely you can be sure that I will be away for a while. But when I come back and you hear me teach, how many of you will be will still see me that ah this man never did it? How many of you can see me like that? Do you know why I'm asking this question? There are people when we, especially this part of the world, when we hear that somebody fell. Eh? Then the person took time out, now came back. When we hear that, you say, mm, all those exploits. Ah, even Bible talk and say, say <laughs> maybe don't go begin. Don't, who knows? Maybe that thing when you do that time. Do you know why you can see me the way you see me? Because you have come to that place. That is why when people fall into what they fall into, all I search for in that person is a heart of repentance. Or let me the fruit of repentance. Finish. And guess what? I know it when I see it. Even those who are struggling with it, maybe you, you confess now, you fall again, you confess now, you fall again. I will not judge you based on all that has been happening. It's only where there is indulgence. Hear my word. There's a difference between indulgence and you are struggling. That is why God does not expose strugglers. It's indulgence that God exposes. Those who are struggling with the part of that, anytime they do, they, they, they feel worse than but you see those ones, they will even plot it. <laughs> and they will justify it. It's only when they are caught that they, how do I use it? It's pretense. They pretend that, oh, okay, they are sorry. One of the reasons I won't do certain things is because I know I will hurt you. When you hear, even though you will forgive me, but I know how to, let me save, apart from the Lord, let me also save my brethren that pain. So even when the opportunity presents itself, there are so many things I need, I will have to check. The father, number one. And I will, this time, I will judge them separately. I'll think of the father, I'll think of the Lord Jesus, I'll think of the Holy Spirit. I can, my friendship with the Holy Spirit, can I sacrifice this? For a moment, then I'll think of my brethren. How would this sound in their ears? Is it what the pain? Is it what putting them through this pain? When I have done all of that, I will draw my own conclusion and I will walk away. Now, within the parameter, that is why you need to learn to be patient. Do you see why patience is very important? You need to learn to be patient. You need to ask yourself this question. Pull back. Why are all the noises happening? Pull back. Before you release that word, that heavy word, that you will later regret. Pull back. Think about different things. Think about the cloud of witnesses. How, if I say what I want to say now, how would they respond? The angels that have been released to me, would they shrink or would they be happy at my response? When you have thought on all of those things, you will find that you said you will caution yourself. <laughs> you will swallow whatever it is. Do you now see why Jesus said, turn the other side when they slap you on one cheek? The reason is, like me, 1992, that was when God delivered me from all those operations. When somebody was annoyed, I'll just go to one corner and say, Father, this, I will say what I feel like doing to the person, and I will see the person as I'm dealing with the person. 
then I would just say, oh, Lord, these things are not, they're not pleasing to you. Then I will repent for the fact that the thoughts came. So after I now graduated, I now, did, I now began to see that even to think it, because when I now read that passage, as a man thinking in his heart, even to think it, I will now think before the thoughts will come into the thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's I go outside of time. I go outside. I will not think it before the thought enters into my thought realm. And I will say no. So I will neutralize it from that realm. So the thought does not even come at all. So that journey started taking me. So people began to wonder, ah, don't you ever get angry? Ah, I got angry once, 19, 19, 2008, and I know what it cost me. I don't intend going back there again. Amen. I pray that the Lord will help you, will help us to not respond to certain things as the situation calls for the responses in the name of Jesus. Time is flying and I really want to conclude this today. Yes. I will not, okay, continue. <laughs> I will try not to interrupt you now. <clears throat> yes. Based on all the treasures of the heavenly realm, mm -hmm. and through your thoughts of heavenly reality, mm. and not with the distractions of the natural world, yeah. your crucifixion with Christ has revived the tie to this life. Mm. And now your true life is hidden in the God wow. and Christ. Amen. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, mm. who you really are will also be revealed. Amen. You are now one with him. You are now one with him in his glory. You are one with him. You are not separated. You are one with him. Everything he expresses, you should be expressing on the earth realm. You are on the earth realm just as he is in the heavenly realm. The truth is that you are there and you are here. How do I put it now? He is you there and you are him here. Does it make sense? So you are so intertwined. So you are the revelation. You are the, his glory expression. You are the living expression of his being. You are the living expression of his glory. You are the glory of the Lord that Jesus is. That is why he says that the whole earth is filled with his glory, even as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Yes, who is reading the message? So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Like yeah. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. What are the things he presides over? Let me ask you. Does he preside over? What are the things we, we complain about? Oh, yeah, you mentioned. It's difficult. You see, how, you, see, you see how it's getting difficult now? If typical church people were here now, they would, before I finish it, said, I would not mention 10. Yeah, let's let's try to think. What are things? At least you hear complaints out there. What are the things they complain about? Hunger in the land. Dollar is falling. Um, Naira is falling. Dollar is rising. There's no light. Everywhere is hot. School fees. House rent. House rent. Yeah. Bad governance. Bad road. I want to ask you a question. If Jesus were to walk this face, the face of this earth. Will he come? Will you, will you hear him mention those things? So, what are the things he presides over? Over what things are he presides over? Everything that pertains to the Father, things that bring joy to the Father, things that give him pleasure. So, what use should be seeking? What will give my Father pleasure? That is what to, that is what it means to live the resurrection life. You know, my children growing up, I wonder that looking back now, maybe they complain to their mom. I realize that you will literally force them to eat. So now when they go stay with people, I remember when my daughter went to stay with my uh, younger brother in the U.S., you have to be. You say, ah, talk to 
talk to your daughter now. Please let me talk. I don't know whether we offended her. She doesn't eat. I say, oh no, that see, it's only plantain. Anytime we find plantain, she will eat. But any other, we don't say, say please talk to her. <laughs> so now they relax. That is noise. Even till now, they don't eat when others are eating. I remember the first time that her daughter came to stay with us in visiting. So I had to, have you eaten? He said, no, don't worry, I'll take care of myself. And of course, we had the special sauce. So we won't even know when she will eat. Sometimes you will see them coming around 10 to come and, and I'm wondering. But you see, I got used to it, so I know it don't it doesn't take so if people come to my house now and I understand. But you see, it wasn't because there was no food. It's it's a, they, I don't know. What I did not know was that God was training them. There were times we actually did not have food. But you see, with my children, God's they so learnt it. They so learnt it that it became a lifestyle because I'm wondering how my younger son would have been surviving journey all by himself until, of course, God gave him a family. But before Last year, I wonder how he survived. But God gave them the training from childhood. And yet, when you see them today, you think they are Jebel. They are not a Jebel, not in Oni. Eh? <laughs> I said there were times we didn't have food. But the amazing thing is that even in the midst of our not having, we gave out. So I learned from the beginning, having nothing yet possessing all things. Though we were poor, yet we were making many rich. What I did not know was that God was building something in me that we are now using in the fields. The ability to create something out of nothing. The ability to give plenty out of zero. Zero is an interesting number. Because from zero, all other numbers will flow. And yet from zero, eh, in zero, every other number will disappear. You don't get it, right? <laughs> I'll leave it there. It's a mystery. Go and solve it. <laughs> Amen. Yes, continue, man. Hmm. Isn't that what we are doing? Isn't it what we are doing? Take it again, man. Don't shuffle along. Don't shuffle along eyes, to eyes to the ground. Absorbed in the things right in front of you. Do you see that? And that's how we moment. Have you seen an unwilling child when you send it? No, 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 are problems, challenges, hate. You are the only one every time. And, and you know, for me, eh? Anytime something goes bad in the house, wait! Once I hear that name, I say yes. <laughs> just go, I want to just go and hide under the bed. Surely when I'm guilty. But you see, whether I'm guilty or not. <laughs> So anybody that wants to put me into trouble was very easy. Just pour something. 
because they know I'm the only one that can tamper with anything from childhood. So once I hear that name, Clement, that's the, Clement, that's the way my dad calls me. That was why maybe that's why I changed my name to Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> You know, military man, we call him the military way. Everywhere will vibrate. Kai. And God save you. When he's talking to you and you don't have answer, pray that there is no harm in front by his left hand. Because anything his hand touches, we will stone you with the thing. And the man is a perfect, you know, left hand, left handed people, they are perfect throwers. Benjamin, <laughs> the tribe of Benjamin. So me, I'm always waiting. But I remember my younger sister one time. I was talking to her. So, <laughs> very funny. So, the, the hot drink he was drinking, the bottle just flung the thing. So, she just dodged and the thing smashed on the wall. The girl now told her, she's using her tongue to lick the. <laughs> so, that was where they caught her. <laughs> Amen. But you see, we have fun, but those funds were dangerous fun. But God save you if his hand catches you. Because the man would be arrest you like his mate. But he was a very loving man. He loving when he's loving, but dangerous when he <laughs> when you do anything wrong. <laughs> Amen. He didn't spare. Praise God. So that was the kind of environment. Those things began to teach me. By the time I started reading, this, surely this one, I started learning. I said, oh my God. I started seeing those pictures of that unwilling child that is that does not want to go to any attend to you. And you see, your face is really squeezed. That is why you see a lot of Faces, their faces are always squeezed. If you, you are driving on the road, you are hooting, hooting, hooting. You just see that they forget themselves. Why? They are shocked with the <laughs> They are not seeing what they should be seeing. Oh, there is so much suffering under the sun. I pray that somebody today will break away from under mm -hmm. the sun and go above the sun in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. There is so much suffering within time. See, time as wonderful partner it is could become a dangerous slave driver if you submit yourself. Or if, if let me put it this way, if you submit yourself to the, to the corruption that has invaded time. But the truth is God created time as a wonderful partner, as a wonderful servant. They were men, you, you see, though everything you see, they have a time lapse. No matter what you are going through, no matter how long it has been, I'm standing here to tell you from the truth today that they have a time lapse. And today marks the beginning of the end of that thing. Yeah. Your story is changing. As you come into the full expression, the living expression, because that is who you are, as you come into the consciousness of that identity, you will see that your story from one day to the other will shift. That thing that had lingered for so long, it begins to take a new color. It's not taking the color of wisdom. It's taking the color of light. And all of a sudden, it's now beginning to beam glory. And people are beginning to draw near. And they are wondering, ah, light on. Is this you? And you are saying, yes, it is me. God brought me thus far. My Ebenezer, he was there all the while. He's been my helper. So that is why I can rejoice. I can dance. I can do all of this. And this is me. <laughs> Amen. So they thought they could ground you. Those powers they send, they, they, they entered into some of their some of their willing vessels and they came and they thought they released a fragrance, hoping that they will ground you so that in fact some they wanted to actually drive you to the point of suicide. They wanted to drive you to the place where you will break away from all your brethren so that they will keep you by yourself. Then they will start suggesting things to you. Then you become that miserable little person. All of a sudden you are losing weight and they, are, they start pursuing from one place to and then the doctors they will, they will now ordain their own doctors and they say ah you have this cancer you have that cancer you have this one you have that one. But guess what? Oh my God. God was taking you through a process. And the time lapse has come. And now you are beginning to shine. Now people are beginning to wonder, is this not the light on? Is this not Ima? 
Uh -uh. They will look you from a distance. Is it a man I'm seeing? Oh, but you will say, yes, it is. From a distance, you will see them. Because they thought you were finished. All of a sudden, they see you beaming with smile. They say, ah, uh -uh. is this a man? Is this a man? Is this Winnie friend? Is this, oh my God. Is this Busola I am seeing? Well, who, who am I seeing from this distance? Is this Udu? Is this Fiona? Oh my God, I said to you that you are you. You are you. But not just the you that they thought you were, but there is a transform you that has come. Now you have become a light that they will see. You become a lighthouse that they will come to you and they will say, we want to know what happened to you. We want to know how you came to this place. Show us the way. Like my friends will say, ah, pastor, cut me soap now. You will cut soap for many people. Eh? You will cut soap for many people. In fact, some will say, give me the water you are bathing with. I want to date with it. Ah, that will be your story. No, 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 no. I changed that confession. That is your story. That is your story. From today, it is your story in the name of Jesus. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice or that we hear the sound even from generation to generation, anytime this is played, I say, this has become your story in the name of Jesus. Eh? Say, throughout last year, you lost, 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 lost. You were losing, 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 losing. Your story has changed. Amen. Your story has changed. The, the season of losses are over. Take those seasons at the season of sowing. And your season of waiting is over. Now you are entering and breaking into the season of harvest. Amen. This is the prophecy. But this prophecy is not just a prophecy, it's your reality. That's what I call forth in the name of Jesus. Yes, let's finish it. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. Do you see that? Look up and be alive to what is going on around Christ. Why? That's why the action is. Do you see? The real action is that the action is not that. Big. When you remain here, you'll be like a pig. You're using your nose. <laughs> why not look up? You should be, this is how you should be walking. And when you walk by that, guess what? You won't know when you start levitating. Because where your eyes is, where your eyes are, that's where you will be. That's why Jesus said, let your treasure be up above. Where thieves are not, that cannot break in to corrupt or to steal. What is that treasure? Your focus. What you focus on opens up to you. May the heavens, may the operations of the heavens be opened up to somebody today Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes, let's try to finish that. See things from his perspective. You see what I'm talking about? Prophet, the prophetic perspective. You see, those prayers that we pray, pause and why? And climb up, then look down and see whether the prayer point will not change. Can somebody give me any prayer point? Any prayer point that just come to your mind, just leave me. Can somebody just give me a prayer request? Whether on the platform, anywhere. Just give me one prayer request. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. In my hand. That's too spiritual. <laughs> just want something that you... Okay, wait. Somebody online. Yes. Grace, go ahead. Okay. My school fees. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want... So what do you want us to do about the school fees? Okay. I want God to supply so that I can finish my PhD. Okay. Now, if you were to pray, if I ask you to pray, make that request now, how will you make it? Pray the prayer. You pray the prayer. Let me hear. Okay, Lord. I need help from you. I need financial supply so that I can finish my going um academics that I had to hold on because of financial um problems so i believe lord you said if i ask you shall give me if i knock the door will be open i stand in agreement with your son today that this should come to pass amen amen now don't go off yet i want to, i want to help you now to a higher operation all right sir now with what we have i don't it's like I'm seeing this name for the first time. How long have you been joining us? I've been joining sir, once in a while, mostly on um, Instagram. Oh, okay, awesome. Oh, okay. sorry. Um, 
On Telegram. Telegram. Telegram, yes, sir. Which means you are not new to these teachings. So I'm going to yes. ask you to guide you now into a different way of prayer that you will if and you will see that either before the end of today or by tomorrow, that you will see that fees will be paid. Now listen. Amen. Mm. I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. Okay. And just see yourself ascending into the place where you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Okay. Now, in this place, this is the realm of possibilities. It is this place where nothing is impossible. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. So if with God, nothing is impossible, and you are one with him, it then means with you, nothing shall be impossible. Mm. Which means you have access into the treasure room, into the heavenly bank of God. But that is your bank. And because you are a son, you have access into that place to receive anything that you need. Now, I want you to picture yourself walking into that treasure house in the heavenly places. Now, don't use any earthly bank to mm. just try it. Okay. Because the operations of the heavenly bank is different. There are, there are no queues there, but there are no security doors. It's mm. a place you just walk into. Once all you need is your sonship identity. So, as a son, I grace, I am a son. So, I walk into the heavenly bank with my check in my hand. Picture yourself holding a slip. That slip is your request. So, you walk in and you, pre you present it. I need this. Mm. He supplies my need according to his riches in glory. Now, see them asking you, how do you want it in cash or by transfer? Hmm. Tell them how you want it. Hmm. See the money being transferred into your earthly account. Mention your account details. Or if you want to write it out, look at picture that you are writing it on the counter then if I were you, I would mention the account details right there. And as soon as you speak the account details, picture that is now being transferred into your account. Picture your phone receiving the alert of that amount that you have called. Now, call it forth and say, I decree by the declarations of this realm, that this fund is now transferred from this heavenly account to my earthly account in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That is the end. Do you know that most of the things that we are making requests of, we already have them? Let me ask, how many of you wanting to go to your bank account to withdraw? You must say, Father, I'm going to the bank account. Lord, help me to withdraw my money. <laughs> but that's all we do. Lord, help me to withdraw my money. Help me to shine my lights. Do you see? And um, these are prayers of identity. That is what it means to call those things that be not as though they are, because in that realm, they are. And even if they were not, because you mentioned, as soon as you mentioned it, listen, the world, the whole earth, the whole world, in fact, not the whole universe is governed by words. What you call a thing, that thing takes the shape of it. As soon as you spoke, it formed. That you did not see it does not mean it not formed. That is why the things that operate in the lower realm 
That's why you find that they find quick manifestation. But the things that operate in the up in the higher realm, you still need to call it to manifest in the lower realm. That is why it looks like when you dream about glorious things, it's as if you it, it, it takes time to manifest. Do you know why? Because it's operating from the higher realm. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the ones that operate in the lower realm, there are already things that identify with it. So it's easy to find the expression. But the other one, you have to dislodge the things that have been operating to create, dislodge it so that there will be no corruption. Why men slept? Somebody came, the enemy came to sow tears. So there was a combination of tears and weeds. So what you do, ensure that you are not sleeping. So clear, you are a dislodger. So they will make pathway for that which have been released in that in the higher realm to manifest in the lower realm. And once it manifests, we subdue every other thing, rearrange them, and shut them down. Amen. So don't be surprised that tomorrow, either by this evening or tomorrow, Grace is sharing her testimony that the fees have been paid because it's paid. It's actually paid. Amen. Do you understand? We should stop operating in the lower realm. Where the action is, is there. See what has been concluded. Your responsibility is to create, to cast pathway, which you are. Open the gates, open yourself, so that it will not come through you to find expression. You see, today's teaching I've combined quite a number of things. That is why you see that as he is walking, you are walking. As, he's cre as he created, you are, cre you, you are creating. It is by his word that everything came into existence. By your word, things will begin to manifest. Mm -hmm. So as we close, I want us to open to our confession, the waiting in the they call herself. Seeing as in office, I'll be waiting. The one that is attached to the flyer. Let's open to it and let's confess it. If you once you are you used to seated here to judge, once you are here, you just raise your hand. It starts with the word Yahweh, the, the word of Yahweh. That's what it's there. Are we there? Okay. Let's now go ahead and just make that confession. Speak it to yourself. One, two, go. I went to see once. I live in the consciousness of my God identity. Situation of okay, do not define me. We give the mission to them my identity. The person and the people have told them. They can respond to the world with one are entwined and lock the straight dance of our union. Amen. Amen. Hope, I want to ask a question. I hope these confessions that we are doing, I hope we are cutting them out to paste them. Let's cut them out. Let me let me teach you what to do. Don't just paste, use different background colors and paste them. If you have a board like this, if you don't have one, you can actually go and construct one. Have a board like this, paste them on it. From time to time, just capture one. Just capture one and use it to bait. Before you cream, after baiting, before you cream yourself, use that as a foundation. Hmm? In fact, you can do foundation, first layer, second layer, third layer. 
By the time you come out, I can assure you, if you do this, I can assure you in another three weeks, people will see you and they will be wondering, ah, you are glowing. What's going on? That's the question you'll be, you'll be hearing around. It will change your pain. Speak it over your children. Speak it over the children in the womb. Speak it over your, 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 your babies. Speak it over your toddlers. Then the ones that can read, paste it in their rooms and tell them to start making, speaking it over themselves. Mm -hmm. I began to see, the Lord began to show me how, in fact, when I was seeing it, I, I was saying, Lord, you are, I told him, I said, you are unfair. You didn't teach me all of these things. Some of the children were still young. Because I began to see children walking in these realities and they were doing things. They were manifesting supernatural. So speak it over your grandchildren. Speak it over your children. Speak it over even the ones in the loins, the ones on yet unborn. Speak it over them. Recreate them. Remold them. And the ones that are already adults, remold them. Mm -hmm. What I do now, I send it. I send it to on our family platform. Let them continue to eat, feed on it constantly. Okay. Okay. So even though we are ending this today, I will keep as the Lord, because honestly, when I did this, look at the passage. I, it's, it's like it's defining everything. So your take-home assignment, go and read the mirror translation of Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Mirror translation. You don't have it, it's easy. For Android, it's even cheaper. It's 8,350. One off download. And every time they update, you don't need to pay any extra. It will just be updating. Amen. Colossians 1, 15 to 18. Then Colossians 3, 1 to 4. Amen. So on that note, we come to the end of this series. That is, even though it does the end of breaking the identity code series. But I know that we are not true with the identity teachings. The Lord will continue to bring it up. Okay. I said I was open to questions. If you have questions, I'll just take one or two. Any question or contribution? Or testimony based on yeah. Something that the Lord showed me this morning. Um, you want to come here? No, sir. Fine. No, it's the recording. And Zimpi and Zimpi is around. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Lord. Okay, part of the things uh, I was showing this morning, we were in a place and then you were cutting patterns, clothes patterns, different ones. And we were watching, a lot of us were there, you were using it to teach us. But other people from other ministries were coming to collect part of the patterns to go to teach their people. Mm -hmm. So as we were talking about, I, I was thinking about it as we were teaching. I said, okay, this is really the pattern that the Lord is giving us today. Mm -hmm. And then you started talking about the cutting of stone. Mm -hmm. Then I remember the cutting of patterns, different patterns, you know. And we're like, people will come, they collect, and they're so excited to take and go to teach yeah. other people. Amen. But it came from our heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And th that's actually what it is. Because what this identity is actually the pattern of the kingdom that the Lord has been waiting for his children to get into. And I know that these that have been opened up will go places. Don't keep it to yourself. Become it. Shine it forth. That men will see it as light. And it will lighten up their own parts in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, mm -hmm. in the absence of none, I want to say thank you so much for being part of this journey throughout the month of March. The reason I, I know that we still have one more Wednesday, but I won't be here next Wednesday. And so I'm going to stop the recording. Then I'm going to go off YouTube.